I don't think we could paddle this. It's just too shallow. We got ourselves into a situation that we've sworn we'd never get ourselves into. condition. It's been April and we're heading on a canoe trip on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia. Typical this time of year, you don't know what to expect. Yesterday you could get a sunburn, today you get hypothermia. But in terms of canoeing and being outside, probably the worst conditions to be in because it's just above freezing where it's not snow and the rain is as cold as it can get. Woo! Oh yeah. We made it to the takeout. The rain has stopped, kind of. It's still kind of cold, it's two degrees. We got Matt, Tristan, Jan, and myself doing an overnight trip on an Eastern Shore River. This is the first time we've paddled this river, but the plan is to travel about 20 kilometers, 80 meter descent and elevation, and paddle all the way to the ocean. Perfect shoulder season camping trip. safe, but backroads in Nova Scotia are safe. Department of Transportation approved. Yeah, we got this. This is all you really need. You can transport anything if you have a little bit of red tape. Okay boys, off we go. Woo! It's still like two feet. Oh yeah, we're ways. a ways. Perfect. Yeah, quite a ways. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's the truck saying now? Temperature? Zero. Zero, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we made it to the put-in. I am a little concerned about getting the Matrix back here at the end of the trip, but we won't worry about that just yet. We're gonna start this trip with a bushwhack portage to the first lake to start this route. Even though it's about two degrees, that portage really made us all pretty warm. I'm sweating, which you not really want to do on a trip like this, but I kind of got myself into that situation. I think we're all just happy. We expected that portage to take a little longer and be a little more arduous than it was. Water in a Nova Scotian river is a rare thing to see. Being such a small piece of land, we really don't have much of a headwater. And because of that, we rely heavily on hurricane season in the fall and snowmelt in the spring to give our rivers enough water to run. Usually, there's only a small window each year, and it's something our community of paddlers mark on their calendars. I've been back paddle once you over this. Back paddle. This window really did not exist this spring because of a lack of snowpack. But steep bony rivers with no water can really sharpen your skills as a paddler and toughen up your boats. And there's always something special to be found on the river.
as we're finding on this river, which is common on most rivers in Nova Scotia, the upper section is typically pretty bony. And on a map, this can look like a blue line. In another 500 meters or so, we're gonna reach a lake. And then at the bottom of the lake, multiple rivers or streams or whatever you wanna call them, come to this river. And we're hoping the river gets a little more swollen with water. And it makes these, these sections that are bony now a little more passable and a little more rapidy. It's a good time to be outside. You know, April is my favorite month here in Nova Scotia uh, because of the, these conditions. Uh, typically, you have lots of white water to paddle, the rivers are full of water, the brook trout are out, and you know, it's before black fly season. So, best time to be out if you are dressed appropriately, which we all are. If you're not, you might get hypothermia. What's up, fellas? Hey, man. <laughs> We've stopped for lunch at the end of this lake. It's pretty cold. We've been here for maybe five minutes and I already feel my body temperature going down. It's, again, guys, it's about two degrees out. It's raining, it's windy. It's a cold time to be outside. This is a very cool spot because there's a lot of glacial activity here in Nova Scotia. And one of the things that glaciers form are called drumlins, which if you can picture a spoon that's flipped upside down, you have a steep side and a longer side. And it's made up of sediments and soil. And in these sections, there are hardwood stands. There's enough soil that hardwood trees can grow in them. And through the Eastern shore and sections like we are right now, you, you can see these glacial formations with all these hardwoods. Yeah, actually. But I guess, uh, Roughly. No bushwhacking. No, yeah, no, I mean, it's all on a trail and sidewalk, so. Not too bad. On day, a little Yeah, that was the first one, so yeah. all of So our theory was lunch would mark the milestone where the river would have more water and we would be able to paddle more sections. We weren't wrong, but we weren't right either. There was definitely more water, but the river got steeper. Very bony section here, a little too tight to paddle, but lining's all right. And that's always option two. If you can't paddle, see if you can line it. Option three, portage. Lining is a technique where you walk your boat like a dog down the river. Typically you have two lines and you can either work as tandem or solo and you use the lines and the current of the water to keep the boat in a position that keeps it away from rocks and in the middle of the deep water current. You're on your own, bud. That's a nice fish. I'll take that. Ah, yeah! 
Yes, sir. <laughs> you got one of the boat? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, we got one of the boat. <laughs> These are perfect size eating fish. They're perfect. Worst case, we come back and camp like at that somewhat good spot on the boat. Yeah, and there would be other little boxes. All right. We got ourselves into a situation that we've sworn we'd never get ourselves into. And that's giving up a mediocre campsite on the eastern shore. Earlier up, about two kilometers, we saw a site that looked decent, but we decided we were probably gonna find a better one farther down river. And we've continued to go down river and there are no sites around. And we're getting to a point where we're gonna start seeing houses soon and start getting into private property. Now, now we're actually, we'll, we'll take anything. We just need a flat area for our camp and that's it. But we're having trouble even finding that right now. But we have gotten to a section where it's really rocky and some very cool ledges. So we're optimistic that around the next corner, we're gonna find a campsite. And we've been saying that for the last kilometer. But this is the one. You see it? Nothing, eh? Around the next corner, there'll be a site. I do like the scenery. Plus one. I saw Jan go. This might be like a proper fall. Does that spot look good? Is that good? Yeah? Yeah, we can make it work. All right, I like that. Yeah. Matt! Matty B just wants to line the river. Yeah. He's in line mode. There's these monster chunks of quartz on the side of the river. The rock here, I believe is a meta-sedimentary rock. So a sedimentary rock, like a shale, that then got compressed and heated up to turn into a metamorphic rock. And then that rock split, and then in those openings, this geothermal fluid just rips through it and then mineralizes. And a lot of those minerals is quartz. So you find these quartz veins through the rock around here. And these big chunks of quartz here are just monster veins. So it wouldn't have formed during the original forming of the metasedimentary rock, it would have formed secondarily through the crack systems and the flushing of the geothermal fluid. And typically you can see this in a lot of rocks around on beaches and probably in your backyard of very small veins on small rocks. But here they're so big that they actually look like rocks themselves, like rocks that formed through its own tectonic forces. Very cool, very large chunks of quartz here. But enough about quartz. I think we found the campsite for tonight. I haven't seen it yet. Jan did one of these. We can make it work. And we're at the point of the day where anything that we can make work, we will make work. So, and also, beautiful spot here beside this shelf. I believe this waterfall has a name. So, I'm gonna have to go investigate, but yeah, I think we found home tonight. Yeah, I think we can get a tent here. There's a few other spots like it. That will work. Let home another site on the other side of the river. What do you say about it? I uh, said it's better. We made one more gamble. Matt went across the river to this other shoreline and it paid off for us. There's a little more flat ground here. This is definitely home for tonight. No more humming and hawing. This is it. We made it. Let's just jump over there. <laughs> uh, I can't. 
finally take off the helmet, man. <laughs> I'm so glad I had it yeah, today. Yeah, for all that raging white water we hit today. <laughs> I feel like the helmet would be good for lining, though. Yeah, that's actually true. One great thing about having multiple yeah. people at a campsite, everyone can take one chore and the site can get set up very quickly. I'm on firewood and something I always tell you guys, always look for dead standing hardwood. We're luckily in a spot where there is hardwood and I found a great one right here that I'm gonna take down. But the problem with this is this is also a widow maker. And those are trees that are very, that are dead, that are very tall. And if you were to move it, the top of the tree can actually break off and come down and hit you, hence the name Widowmaker, because you die and then your wife is a widow. So that's one thing I want to avoid, so I'm going to actually preemptively knock the top off by shaking it. Seems pretty stable now. That's a heavy piece of log that I do not want landing on my head. Risk assessment. That's what you gotta do, guys. Don't make your wife a widow. One more. I'm gonna saw this up, bring it back to the camp. This is gonna be great wood for tonight. Great wood. Well, the fellas have already been doing work back at the site. All set. We got firewood cut, the tarp is currently getting set up, and our tents are up. Which means it's time to crack an IPA. And typically you guys see me drink a lot of Galaxy IPAs as well as the unfiltered double orange IPA. But another one that I really like that Propeller has just released in the liquor stores here. Sabro. Sabro Double Indian Pale Ale. Uh, it's pretty strong, it's a 7.5%. And this is one that you could get at the Propeller Brewery for a while, but they haven't released it in the liquor store until just recently. So I'm very excited to drink this one. It's a little stronger than the, the uh, Galaxy IPA, but when you're in the woods and it's been raining on you all day and you're cold and you're tired, you want a strong beer, I'll tell you that. Man, that's so dry. Yeah, that's what we want. Oh, that's hurt on my hands. <laughs> Look at that. Jesus, this Dude, guy was I'm... eating. That's all that's in there too. There's no bugs in them at all, except for that one. How was the trout, Matt? Delicious. That was really good. What'd you guys think? Can't beat it. Yeah. Hard to beat. Misty morning on the lake, and out of the fog, you just hear like splash, 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 oh, splash. Cool. And this cow moose was just coming through the bay, and she weaved all the way up from 300 yards to like 40 yards, just walking around. It rained a little last night, but this morning, I don't think it's as cold as it was yesterday. You can't really see my breath. There doesn't seem to be much rain in the forecast. Just some gray skies and about 
uh, max five degrees. I know we gambled yesterday a lot. We kept passing up spots that looked like potential campsites to find the best campsite. And we got a little farther than we wanted to and a little later in the day than we wanted to, but we made it work and we found a great spot on the spend here. But typically in the Eastern shore, you do not want to gamble with campsites because they're few and far between. But we lucked out hard in this spot right here. We have about eight or nine kilometers to get to the ocean and it's still about a 40 meter drop in elevation. There might be waterfalls, shelves, and just steep water that we're gonna have to negotiate. And with how shallow the water is so far, we are a little worried. There's not gonna be enough water for us to paddle. I believe it. I believe that there's a 30 meter drop. In two and a half kilometers? Yeah. yeah. Might be even a bit less. It's just a rough measurement. Yeah. You can see the first one right there already. Right. By the end of the river, you won't have any pain. <laughs> it's going to be a gray canoe at the end of this trip. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> What do we got? We're at 30 meters above sea level. Trip ends at the sea, and uh, that's only two and a half kilometers away. So we're guessing there's a lot of ledges. Yeah, I guess it'll be really slow, and maybe a lot of lining. So this might be part of the 30 meter decline in elevation. Lots of lining here. I don't think we can paddle this. It's just too shallow. Draw. Bring yeah. the boat around that way. Yeah. 
and then get the next set on the far right. There's an eddy there, we can... We can... Yeah, well, let's look at the next one. some uh, finagling. Yeah. Oh no, it's good. Like we didn't delay once we weren't in the situation we wanted to be. Yeah, it's like once you realize you can't get to your spot, you gotta like find a new one. This entire river is six inches of water. All right, time to see. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like we didn't even paint it. Poor Canyon. We made it back to the car. River was extremely bony. Another weekend, another river. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.